Hi, this is Pete at Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com, and this is tutorial 147. Now, in our last set of tutorials, we got a little main menu screen loading up, and I want to keep moving along from that point, so I'm going to come back and revisit the character generation screen, and I want to introduce a new uh, GUI element, and we're going to look at the repeat button. Now, the repeat button fires every time you have it held down, so it's a great way to have your... Uh, user to be able to increase and decrease their stats without having to click the button a million times. And it's fairly easy to implement. I'm only going to need two more variables. And the first one I'm going to make public. And this is going to be my delay timer. This is basically how long uh, between increments or decrements of the stat. So this will be of type float. And I'm just going to call this delay timer. And I'm going to start off with, I think, quarter of a second. I've made it public, so you can always go into the inspector and play with it and find, you know, that value that works great for you. Uh, the second one I'm going to want is basically uh, to keep track of how long it's been since we last increased their, their stat or decreased it. And I'm going to make this one private. And I'm just going to call this last click. And I'll start that off at zero. So let's save that off. And I'm just going to go right down to my on GUI. And I'm going to go down to the plus and the minus buttons. So here's the minus one. And the minus one displays just before the plus one. So where we have button here, I'm just going to change that to a repeat button. And that's all we have to do for that line up there. And we take a look and right here is where we actually click it and here's where we're going to decrease the base stat if the stat is lower than the minimum starting value and of course we add it back to our little pool points and we call the update stat or the stat update now right before this I'm going to create another if block and in this if block I'm just going to check to see if time dot time minus our last click is greater than our delay timer and if it is then I'm going to allow them to increase or decrease the stat and right after I'm done that I'm going to want to go ahead and make sure that the last click timer gets set to time dot time now I'm pretty sure I've covered time dot time before uh, but just in case, a quick recap is uh, it basically means how long in seconds your game has been running. So let's say your game has been running 10 seconds. Exactly. Uh, this will end up being stored over here into your last click as 10 seconds. And let's say a second goes by before you click again. Uh, when it checks, this time dot time is actually going to return 11 seconds. So just keep in mind that this is uh, how long your application has been running. So we've got the negative button working, so let's go ahead into Unity and let's try it out. So I'll start it up. And I'm at my character screen, and I'm just going to hold down Might. And we see now we don't have to frantically click our button to have it increase or decrease. Now, of course, it probably is a little faster to make them click, because they can click you know, much quicker. But then we have it exposed over here and you can actually change the time if you want. I don't want it to be too quick because well that's actually not too bad. Uh, I'm probably going to stick to a quarter of a second for me. So let's go back into mono develop and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the plus button. So the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if time dot time minus last click is greater than our delay timer and if so allow them to do this and right at the very end set your last click to equal time dot time So let's go back in and we'll take a look and we'll actually go ahead and do the whole thing and see how it looks. See, just to make sure that they can't go over uh, 
spending points. So I'm just going to check here. Now it doesn't seem to be working for the plus until I let go. So I've probably done something wrong. I'm just going to quickly select my main camera. Uh, let's go back into the code and take a look. So if time dot time minus last click is greater than the delay timer. We'll allow them to do this. And the error is that we're using a button instead of a repeat button. So there we go. Let's save that off. We'll head back into Unity and we'll start it one more time. Now I'm actually starting from our main menu and I've deleted my character in my player pref. So that's why it's bringing me directly to here. So I'm going to select my main camera just so I can see my stats over here. Of course, after my email notification disappears and let's try it now. And there we go. And let's just make sure that we can't go above. Of course, you can still click as fast as you want. Uh, it's still only going to go up as fast as holding it down, though. But we'll go ahead and spend all our points. And I just want to make sure you can't go above zero. Great. And I'm going to quickly restart and test to make sure that you can't go below our minimum threshold, which, which I believe was 10. So I'll just hold it down. We keep going. And there we go. And of course, it should work for all of your, your skills. So that's done. Now there's one more little correction I wanted to make in our player class. Uh, let me see, do I have that loaded? I do not. So I'm going to go back into Unity. I'm going to load up our player character and our base character. At the end, uh, I'm not sure if it was the last tutorial. It was in one of the last few tutorials. Uh, we went ahead and added an awake function for our player class. And I told you to add the base awake. And while that does work, you're still going to keep getting warnings that the awake function is hiding uh, your player character or awake function is hiding uh, the one from base character. And let's just get rid of that warning while we can. And all you got to do is uh, put in override in between your public and void. And then come over to your base character, go to the awake function, and stick a virtual in there. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.